Hello guys and welcome back to getting started with LabVIEW and today's example will be reviewing again part 2 on how to use table control in LabVIEW. Uh, so for today's example is going to be the continuation on the part 1 of using table except that we will be creating uh, a user input value and a button and what is what are we going to do is we're going to press the button to save the data into the table uh, how, we, how are we going to do this is first we're going to have a table probably just going to have a table here and uh, once we have the table here the next is we're going to have several input controls and a button of course uh, we're going to need another button as well which is the stop button to stop the entire application from running most of the time I prefer not to have the labels <coughs> prefer not to have the labels there and uh, right let's have a string control this will be the first name and then we have second name sorry last name I'm gonna put this as last name so we're gonna input first name last name and of course a numeric control and of course you just put this as age and uh, usually I just change this representation from double to integer 32 it's just for convenience only and lastly we have a button that will actually input the data will save the data to the table and I will call this text caption insert data and this button is called insert button but of course I prefer not to view the label all right so now we have the simple user interface here our table control will be set to indicator and I need it to be run continuously so I want a while loop so I'll put the while loop here so we have a while loop and whenever you have a while loop you need to make sure that it doesn't run continuously and taking up the CPU so I'll put the time at here as well to slow down the loop so that the RAM oh sorry the CPU power will not be taken up too much so now the idea is <coughs> the user will actually input the first name last name and age and when you press the boolean button insert data the data will automatically be stored into the table control so now first things first is we need to make sure and we know that the table control actually requires a 2d array a 2d array data input as a string so what we're going to do here is we're going to put this outside to initialize the variable of the 2d array which we will insert this 1d array values into the 2d array so let's uh, put the important controls here in and you can actually use this function up here align objects and you can actually align it and you can also use the distribute object to set the objects in a proper manner now I want to build an array Array. so I need to create this array which receives the input of the string and previously we have actually covered that to convert the number into string we need to use the number string conversion and because this is the integer value so we'll just use decimal conversion once you have this <coughs> whenever the user press the insert button it should input the value into the table control so to do that we need to use a case structure this will actually check whether has the user press the insert button so let's move this guy here up here just up here 
now once we have that whenever you have a true value it should insert this now we need to have a insert into array function and most of the time we have the we actually have to make sure that the variable is constantly being looped into the while loop so what we do is we have uh, the array going into the true function and once you have the array inserted you can actually see that it requires the input of a 1d array now it goes in here and once that is done you just need to put the output into the table control now we also need to make sure that once the 1d array has already been inputted into the 2d array the data needs to float con continuously within the while loop to do that <coughs> we have to link the output of the built array and we have to replace this to shift register now shift register is actually a function where we have to make sure that the value is constantly being floating within the while loop so that it does not loss and once we actually have the false condition because if there's no input the same data will continue in the table control last we just need to put the stop function in here so let's uh, try to run this example now we have john or probably john last name doe age 23 if we insert it actually goes into here but what if and if you continuously press the data insert data button it constantly being added into the table but what if, if you want to make sure that you want to add in another information now you see that once i have already added the insert data the data actually stays and it doesn't goes off this is where you actually need to use a property node so in this case we try to stop this and we can also try to create a property node let's say let's use implicit property node in this case property node value and we put it into the true which means the data will the value of the control will actually clear by itself once the data has already inserted into the table control the same goes for this as well we create the property node for value we have the value here and we have to change them change all to right and change all to right all you need to do is just create a constant and we put this here as zero as well and that's all so now if we start this you can see that it's actually zero at the moment once you put insert data the control value has been reinitialized to nothing so let's put jane smith h probably 14 now nah, 18 insert and there you go so this is one example uh, for part two on how to use the table control in LabVIEW based on what we have actually covered before this the property node build array using case structure boolean and uh, yeah so this is how we actually another way of how we can actually create a simple table data user input application in LabVIEW.